guys and gals and friends of YouTube uh, another small build project here I um, just wanted to show you I've got built and I'm, I haven't painted it yet I gotta do that and I'll, I'll hopefully get that done and show you the finished product but um, I'm building me a little field box <coughs> excuse me my helicopter I, I had to buy a heavy-duty starter the Sullivan Dino Torque uh, it runs off 12 volt or 24 volt my 12 volt starter box just barely has enough ump to start it sometimes it kind of chugs before it takes off and I've broke two clutches in it like that so what I'm doing I'm building me a little fill box for this starter and I'm gonna run uh, two uh, seven or 11.1 lipo batteries in series which will make it 22.2 volts I can run up to 24 on this my friend Andy already built him one and man it just zings that that 91 YS engine right over and I can still use it on my plane so the box I'm gonna build uh, I, I'm putting a 22.2 volt jacks on one side and on the other side is going to be a 12 volt panel. It's also small enough and portable we can move it around and use it to run our chargers off of and stuff at the field. You know, I also have a big battery in my big black toolbox but uh, this will be smaller and easier to move around and this is a small 12 volt battery so but it works great for chargers. Uh, but the lipos will be running the starter off of it. But anyway I'll show you kind of what I got going here and, and show you part of the build. Okay, um, I, I bought a, a piece of, uh, oh, what is it, three, three sixteenths, a little under quarter of an inch wood, cabinet building wood at Lowe's. <coughs> I marked, I drew this all out on paper, uh, measured the size and everything I wanted using a, a, a ruler and a square. And then I took those measurements, uh, took my board up to Ken since my table saw and stuff is buried in my shed. And, Anyway, I wanted to help him yesterday anyway, so we cut them out. We cut the pieces out on his table saw, did the angles on a bandsaw, drilled the holes for the handle with Forstner bits, and uh, cut all the pieces. And I'm going to epoxy the joints together with this and then put finishing tacks in the seams also, all the joints. Uh, and then on the floor of it, I will also put square stock around the base glued in. Uh, then what I've got, is, here's the, the piece with the panel, um, it's not mounted in there yet, it's just in the hole, but there will be a center section about halfway up off the floor that this 12 volt battery will set in and that will hold it, it'll be about right there. That will hold that and then these LiPo batteries will go on each side of that with some Velcro and then there'll be a lid over the top of that as a floor and it'll have some little straps in one end that I can pull it out. This will be removable so I can get in there to get my batteries out to charge it and then my starter will set inside this uh, here. But we got all the pieces cut. Uh, I've got these holes cut out. Now I, I couldn't, I didn't know where my jigsaw was. The ideal way you, you can drill holes in the corners and then take a scroll saw, which I have, and take the blade loose, stick it up through here, and cut those out. Probably smoother than this, but it's not going to show, so I didn't care. Um, or a jigsaw. Uh, the, the thing I used was, uh, I've got this little a set of these little miniature saw blades. <clears throat> this one, you can see how big it is. My fingers, it's probably inch and a half, two inches across, two inch. Anyway, uh, this is a little saw blade. It's very dangerous, so you have to be very, very careful when using this to cut these these holes out right here. Uh, when you're holding the board, you, you want to keep this steady and straight. Do not let it get in a bind or jerk. And whatever you do, be careful where your finger placements are underneath while you're cutting this, because it will take a finger off really quick. So that's what I used. But uh, I think I got this blade set I don't want to say Harbor Freight, but I'm not real sure. But anyway, it works good. So, okay, we got all the pieces out. Uh, we'll start putting this thing together. 
Oh, well, one other thing I've got to do. I have to cut these leads off and solder Deans on. I have a uh, three wire Deans which will hook up in series. Uh, the two batteries will go here and then this will go from a Deans connector to these banana plugs that will stick out of the panel. My starter uh, wire I have put banana plugs on it for my panel so we're going to use those and uh, anyway I'll show you how I put all this together and and uh, anyway enjoy square stock cut for our shelves to sit on. Um, got my lines marked where I want them. I'm going to put them at the bottom of the lines. We're going to make some six minute epoxy. We'll use clamps to hold these in place uh, while they dry. And then the sides joints we'll use uh, 30 minute epoxy. We're using six minute on this. Uh, but anyway, let's get some glue mixed up here and we'll put a couple of these together and let them set while we're working on the others. Mix up even amounts. I need to get a mixing stick. Okay, mix that up thoroughly till it's kind of a milky color. And it smells really bad too. So, ooh, rotten eggs or something. Okay. Now, I want to figure out which way this is going to lay. Okay. Uh, thin CA works really well on balsa with this hardwood. It doesn't uh, wick into the wood as good, so epoxy makes a lot stronger joint. Plus, there's going to be some weight in this, you know, shifting around. So, um, all right, lay that end on there. Get it in alignment with my line. See if I can manage to get a clamp on here without moving it. Oh, look at there. I did it first try. Now, if you'll notice, I left a, a gap at this end. That's because the other piece is going to connect to the end of that. So I'll make sure they're the right direction on that, uh, that piece. All right, let's check this one. These are a little bit warped here and there, so I'm going to turn it to where I... Get it level. Okay, do that side. Yeah, let's do this side. It's got a little bow in the middle, that way we can push the bow out of it with the clamps. Okay, start right here. Put our glue on here. If you get uh, this epoxy glue on your hands for whatever reason, it will wipe off really clean with uh, denatured alcohol and a paper towel. When you're using epoxy, always keep denatured alcohol around. That's, that's what will clean it up. Okay, let me get this one in place. Make sure the ends are flush. Get a clamp on that. And we'll turn it around. Clamp on that end. Okay, there's one of them. We'll get the rest of these glued and we'll come back and show you how we tack it together. Okay, uh, be sure you test fit all your pieces. Make sure they line up before you put any glue or anything like that on them. They all fit. Got them where they all fit like they're supposed to. So, uh, we'll start gluing and tacking this thing together. Let me get some glue mixed up. We're going to use 30 minute epoxy on this, so hopefully we have time to tack all these together. I'll be right back. I'm gonna, my, my glue joint where I'm gonna put these tacks, I, I held them, they're little bitty finishing nails, so I held them with a pair of needle nose and started them with my little brass hammer. We want to make sure you get those really straight because you don't have very much thickness here so if you got it at an angle it's gonna come out the side of your wood and mess it up so be sure and get them in a really good straight line. 
then I can I can glue this piece in place and then drive my tacks in and that will hold it and then we'll go on so on all the way around it and do that uh, so let's let's get a couple of them glued okay start putting our glue on here don't need a whole lot just to have to join that I've got my paper towel handy with my alcohol to clean this off with all right this one goes right here so I'm going to use this over here to stabilize it to set this on I guess it'd help if I got the right length wouldn't it all right we want to line this up very carefully especially the bottom of it it has to be perfectly flat now we're going to gently drive those tacks in and it moved on me of course Okay, there, got it. Now make sure the side stays flush. That one up. One more here. Push that in just a hair. Okay, got that side. And our glue. Now let's turn it around. Put the glue on this side. We are working with 30 minute epoxy here, so we have plenty of working time. And we're going to line that one up. Make sure the sides are flush, the bottom's flush. And let's take our first one. And make sure it stays straight. Okay, got two sides, they're glued, nailed. All of our runners on the inside. Oh, I got one backwards. How about that? Isn't that just lovely? See? That's why you fit everything first, and I didn't do a very good job of that. So now I've got to drive these back out. Okay. This goes up, so I've got glue on the wrong side. Let me clean that off right quick. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I knew I'd make a mistake somewhere along the lines. Okay, that goes right there. So, we want to glue this side. Now you know why I'm using 30 minute epoxy. I have room for my mistakes. I make a lot of them, y'all just don't know it. I don't show y'all them on tape, on the camera. <laughs> but, fun doing this stuff. I paid, I think, maybe six bucks for this big old sheet of wood. I have enough to make a whole nother box out of it probably, or whatever else I want to. Uh, so as far as material wise wood and stuff I will only have maybe four bucks the glue and nails and all five at the most in this box not counting my electrical stuff and that isn't all that much so okay now our runners are lined up <laughs> and what now we'll put the floor in bottom and make sure it fits good all lines up which it does okay we're gonna put glue on these three sides and uh, nail this thing and I've already started all my little nails in the side of this thing so I don't have to worry about driving them and I mean all I gotta do is finish tapping them on the end they're already started I did that before I Got ready to put this in. Okay, let's rotate this around. Now. Doesn't matter if there's, well, we don't want too much excess glue on the inside because we're going to put a, a little square stock around the bottom of this. Okay, one more side here.
and I, I will, uh, I wanted to get this put together because I'm going to fly tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Sunday. Uh, I will get back to work on the Edge 540 here as soon as I get this done today. I'll start doing some more. I've already got some more done since the first video, but I'll do some more. Okay, we want our non-glued side out, and it doesn't matter which side goes in. Now, what I'm going to do is turn this over to do the nails on this side first since they're sticking out everywhere. So, I want to get this flush with the bottom and the sides. Okay. stick this off the edge of the table here and because of the nails or lay it up on another block of wood I'm just going to let it stick off the edge be fine okay there's three sides well I've got to do this one hang on okay nails will strengthen it plus it'll hold the glue joint together by the time I get all this in here it will be very strong and then this piece right here will uh, it'll actually glue in here also so that all the way to these three sides so that's gonna make it even stronger and I left this space right here you'll notice this cutout let me get this camera down here I left this cutout over here because of the panel uh, sticking in there, I had to have clearance uh, for that to clear the wires and stuff, and I left an inch right there. So we won't put this in until after we put the other side on. I'll have to mix some more glue. It's starting to set up now, but uh, anyway, we'll get the rest of this on, and I'll show you how to put the innards in it. Okay. Got it all together, pretty much outside. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see in here or not, but I ran square stock all the way around the base for the floor to reinforce the floor it's it's tacked and glued all around the edges plus I put that square stock and glued it in that'll help reinforce that floor because the weight of this battery is going to be sitting on that so now we've got this piece in the middle uh, I will put glue on it and glue it down to my little runners I put in there and then uh, get the batteries installed and then this last piece is the lid and I'll put a little piece of ribbon on one corner of it inside where I can pull it out and it will set in here like so that'll be the lid but I'll have a little ribbon there that I can pull it and uh, get it back out and then my starter set in there just like that and I have a handle up here I gotta glue the handle in so that'll be my heli starter box and then uh, we'll use this 12 volt panel for charging batteries, all of our chargers run off 12 volt and AC, so we use them a lot at the field. So we'll have this 12 volt panel in here uh, for chargers, and then on this side, I'll drill two little holes over here and put my uh, banana plugs in here for the 22.2 volt outlet for this starter. And I will label that uh, with a plate, so you don't plug a charger or anything else into it. The only thing you'll be able to run off of this is that starter. But be a nice little handy field box and uh, almost done here. Get the rest of it put together and show you that and then we'll paint it. I have a completed box. Uh, got my 22.2 volt jacks here. I'll label that with a little, probably a little metal plate or something. Uh, my helicopter starter so it'll crank that big old YS-91 over. Um, then, with the handle glued in, I've got to sand the end of this off right here. I've got to paint the thing of course. And I've got my panel. 12 volt panel on the other side and I can run chargers or uh, whatever off of it, fuel pumps. My, my heli fuel jug has an electric fuel pump mounted on the side of the jug. I can plug it right into this and use this to pump my fuel. So this will be mainly my heli box and then we can use, you know, over here and in the pump, but we can use it also to start, uh, you know, run chargers and stuff like that. Um, there's the, the floor of it. It will come out. I, put a, I just put a little piece of ribbon 
between two pieces of wood and glued that to the back. And that way, when I stick that in there, I can uh, get that out real easy. And got my batteries and everything inside. I got to put the Velcro on these and the tips on them. But I'll be able to get in there. To, uh, the 12 volt battery I can charge through the charge jacks right here on the panel. But the lipos, I'll be able to unplug them from the Deans, pull them out, charge them, and put them back in here. So uh, one thing I haven't put on here yet too also is a volt watch that I'm going to mount right up here and it'll be wired into the 12 volt where you can push the button and it'll light up and tell you how many, you know, if your battery's getting low or not. So I can kind of watch that. So I'll mount it probably right up here at the top. So anyway, uh, I'll finish putting it together. I'll take the batteries back out of it in the panel. Uh, I've already kind of sanded the edges a little bit. I got a little bit more to do and then we'll we'll paint this thing up and I'll do the finish up on the video on that. I'm going to try to paint it two-tone. I'll have to tape some of this off. I'm going to do, I don't know, probably a, a orange with some black trim on it, something like that. So, I don't know. Something that'll be bright and be able to look around and see it at the field. So Alright, we'll be back when we get it painted. Okay, uh, well I'm letting my paint dry. I've uh, got my panel wired up. I uh, soldered two leads on to clip onto my battery. Also in that same solder joint, I soldered on a uh, red and black wire tip and then my volt watch uh, that I put on the outside, I'll drill a little hole and I put the other end of that on that, I'll run that through that hole and I can plug that in and uh, take it off or out. if it goes bad or something I can always change it. My other box I soldered it in solid so I have to unsolder it but this one I decided to put a plug. Uh, a lot easier to deal with so that's all ready as soon as the paint dries we'll get this thing put together and see if the lights work okay guys got her all painted panel installed got the volt watch down here battery's low need to charge it that goes to my 12 volt battery it's all 12 volt panel and got my batteries in here got the wiring all soldered and plugged where I can take the lipos out and charge them and uh, this tray right here We'll set right in there like that. I've got a little ribbon here I can get a hold of and pull the end of it up. And my starter will set right in there like that. Got 22.2 uh, volt hookups here. I've still got to put a little label here just so somebody doesn't plug a charger or something into that accidentally and blow their charger up. So I will label it. I've got some little metal here somewhere I'm going to... Uh, get out and make a panel to screw on there and, and put stickers on it, 22.2 volt. But anyway, uh, there you go. Nice little fill box. I don't know, it took me, uh, not counting cutting out the pieces, putting it all together and painting it, it took me probably five, six hours. And uh, not counting the panel and the volt watch, just the, the material for the, the wood. Uh, probably got maybe five dollars in the wood and paint uh, six or seven maybe with the paint and then uh, of course the panel there you know whatever they run this one was given to me but uh, panel runs around 18 to 22 dollars I think something like that Volt watch I believe is about 10 bucks if you want that on there I just like to have it on there so I know when my battery's starting to get low the little adapters for the 22.2 volt on the other side were oh three bucks I think and a little bit of soldering and wiring in there so uh, oh yeah, the little Dean's connector in there, that was uh, I think nine bucks for that wide Dean's connector. So, But anyway, I've got a nice little field box here for my heli. Uh, I'll run my, my starter off of 22.2 volts and kick that big old YS engine over. It's also handy on my bigger 120 size planes to crank them over with. Um, but uh, very simple to build and make your own little field box. You can make your own design. You can, you can add an extension out here, our little platform for a fuel bottle if you want to and which I didn't want my fuel bottle on here I just want this as small and compact as I could get it so we can move it around and hook hook our chargers and stuff to this panel so alright there you have it all done see you at the field thanks for watching